Glory to God. So everybody, as you're joining, of course you can share this broadcast. And um, I want you to really start looking at the, the power of crying out to God for wisdom and understanding daily because you have to let the Lord know that you're interested in him giving you the fresh things of his knowledge because he, he will hide it away from you because he want to see whether or not you're interested in it. The spirit of disinterest is something that could happen to you easily. Somebody could come into your life that are the, they are the impartation of the spirit of disinterest. They are the imp impartation of you drifting away from your fire. So, or something could happen that goes against your prayer. You could pray for something exactly and then it, something else happens that goes against the prayer. There are several things throughout a day that many people don't do, but if they would do it, there will be a burst of strength that you have that other people don't have. You'll have a momentum. Because what happens, son, a lot of times, if somebody is not praying in tongues, they're already losing battery power. Wow. Wow. They're already losing energy. And they don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. So their battery is already at a low voltage. They're at a place mentally that they're not supposed to be. And the grace of God is weak. And as a result, they don't have a lot of things going on mentally that will keep them in the will of God. So they are already in a hand-to-hand a, a -hand walk with Satan and don't recognize it. So there's things in a day you'll have to do You'll have to talk praises to God. You'll have to say things towards God to break your, your, your pride. Because a lot of times, son, do you know some people, they'll say stuff and they'll kill their, their, their purity because they'll say, that'll never be me. Wow. 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 I, I'm, I'm showing you, I'm like actually giving you the blueprint, you know? They'll say, they'll say, that'll never be me. Not me. They'll ne I'll never let nobody do that to me. But when you carry in your cross, what happened during the cross of Christ? Were there not mockery? Yes. Were there not betrayal? Yes, Lord. So that never would be me. Were, that never, were, were, were there disrespect? There was. Yes. So all these things happen. So when you get to that element of thou never be me, mm -hmm. there's a pride that you just tapped into that will now resist God whenever he is attempting to use you into a certain direction. Wow. wow. So there are words that people don't recognize. It's a forbidden word. It's a forbidden word. And sometimes the forbidden word doesn't come out of you, it'll come out of somebody. Like somebody will tell you, don't let nobody take advantage of you. And they're speaking bitter words, forbidden words. Because now when you get into the mode where God is breaking your pride, you also have another word system that says, don't let nobody take advantage of you. Wow. So now those words are resisting God's word. God is a word. And he is the word. He, he is a word. He is the word. So words is how Satan combats the God realm in you. Wow. Are you seeing this? So if Satan want to combat the God realm in a woman, the woman has to hear other words that goes against the God realm. Because God put all of his realms in his word. So there has to be someone that have spoken a word to you that's opposite to God's word so that you'll start fighting against God. Don't let nobody treat you like that. When the Bible says that you will suffer according to the will of God, but do it with all joy, do it with the right spirit. But if you say, I will never, I'll never let nobody do me like that then when you get into the situation, you're going to find yourself weary. You're losing, 
you're, you're losing battery power. You know why you're losing battery power, Tashawn? Because you're in a place where you already heard yourself say, I'm not going to let nobody do me like that. Meanwhile, it's the will of God for you to be in that place. And however they're doing you shouldn't be your focus. But you already created a standard. What's your take on this, Joseph? What you feeling as you? What's your take on all of this? I think it's powerful, Father. Yeah. I feel like. Yes. If you um. You have to be strong. Yeah. And if you, it's yeah. like if you don't, if you don't yeah. decree it, you're gonna lose that light. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you actually, you actually have to every day find those words of wisdom that are in alignment with the light that you have. Yes. And like that, yeah, go so ahead. Sir. And that you said every day, you, you have to, you know, God has that light for you every day. That light resets. You have mm -hmm. to find that light. You have to plead the light over, over lust. Right. Over, um, you know, over how to spend money properly, how to sow seed. Right. And if you don't do that, you're going to lose your light. That's a seed. That, that's why the seed is so powerful. The seed that has changed my life in so many ways. Without the seed, I don't know where I would be. So, Joseph, is this your son? This is my son. This is this is Joseph's son to my right. Have you? What, what was your warfare sowing wise for him? <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you? Or did you ever sow for him? Or that's I, not. I sowed seed for my son and. Sowing seed for my son saved my son. So you used the seed and it connected to Sean to salvation. Absolutely. Powerful. To Sean, what, what, what would you say began to happen in your heart? What happened? What was like the defining moments where you began to really see like, I'm changing? <laughs> yeah, so, well, I started off, you know, I was just, in the world doing, you know, things of the world. Yeah. And in secret, I didn't even have any knowledge of what was going on behind the scenes, mm. which was the seed in effect. Yeah. Right? And so my father was sowing seeds for me. Yes. Uh, behind the scenes, and I didn't know. But the seed so powerful, it started changing what I did and, and how I started to see and I, it opened my eyes to see the decisions that I was making mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the direction and where I would end up. So that's where it was, it was powerful. It started, I started seeing my decisions change. The people I hung out with changed, mm. you know, and it was just powerful. Just everything just started changing. I started following profit, started sowing seeds into profit. And we just, we're going strong from here. It's, it's been mighty. It's been amazing. Father, it's also brought us closer together. Yes. It's brought us closer than ever. True family. True family. True family. You, 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 you destroyed the demonic verdict of family. Wow. And you, you apostolically corrected it through sowing. Wow. Glory to God. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, Lord. So, so every sower has an apostolic dimension to take dominion over, 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 over. God's plan taken full effect towards every department. You have an apostolic anointing that's waiting to happen. See, the woman in Genesis, she had a kingly anointing to take authority over her curiosity, but she didn't use it. Whoa. You see in this? Whoa. She had a kingly anointing to take over that, that uh, take authority over that dimension of curiosity. So what would you say, woman of God? What would you say is your, what is your real, what is your real, um, your challenge in life? You have to take authority over your curiosity, your sight system, your hearing, because what you hear and see, mostly what you see creates covetous uh, uh, it, it, uh, it creates covetousness within you. What you see, mostly. You see things. That's why you desire it. Your desires can be corrupt because your sight, your viewpoint is corrupt. What you're watching. 
And then what you see in other people's life, you crave it for it to be your own. You, you, you could easily start to pit yourself in other people's picture. And that's their frame. <laughs> you're not supposed to be in it. But you're looking at their life and you're saying, that fits me. And God's saying, you've been fearfully and wonderfully made in a frame that doesn't fit what you've been looking at. So what you, what you have to recognize, that's always going to be a challenge to take apostolic dominion over your curiosity. 